Good morning, everyone. It's August. Can you believe it? We're, as we begin another month, we begin the month in prayer and thanksgiving that we are here and we are being gathered by God into the body of Christ today of Creator Lutheran Church, or whenever you are watching this as well, some of the flexibility that this means of gathering does prov um, provide for us. So we give thanks to God for finding a way to have that word reach us. Um, some housekeeping coming up here. So next week, we will only have um, Facebook and, and internet worship. So only Facebook and then our website or YouTube channel will be where you can find our worship service. Next week, there will be no Zoom um, li live worship available. And then also coming up, after some um, feedback, we are going to be having two services of Zoom communion a month. So this month it will be on the 16th and the 30th of August. Um, they'll, the Zoom invitation is in your announcements. You can also, um, if you need it to be emailed to you, that can also be done so that you can connect in that way. I'm also trying to figure out a way to look at the logistics and kind of make sure I'm dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's for a drive through communion in which I, you would be able to um, have some face-to-face -face contact and receive the elements and God's promise of forgiveness um, in a drive through way at church. So that will hopefully be coming um, in the second half of August as well. And also, if you are somebody or you know somebody in our congregation who who has expressed the desire to have a pastoral visit um, either at church or have me come to your your patio or porch near you and, and either bring communion or just have a, a, a pastoral conversation, please feel please reach out. That is um, something that we are able to do now and there's enough understanding and guidelines that the risk is mitigated in that. So if that's something that you or somebody that you, you've been in contact with, would be um, blessed with, please invite either them to ask or ask yourself so that we can schedule some of those throughout August and into September. Our, our Created COVID team continues to um, fine tune the logistics of either outdoor or uh, indoor worship with some more listening rather than singing. We'd, we'd continue to, we would continue to have these formats as well where you are partaking today for those of us who are on all different levels of comfort here and we are looking at for the for the the fullness of our community which is a multi-generation no community and that is a blessing that we have and also a challenge in this time of covid to make sure we are um, caring for each and every one of you because each and every one of you matters as in as, and is important there are some online Bible studies and devotions available. The devotions are morning and evening on most days. There is a women's reading group that will be meeting um, for the Where the Crawdads Lie on August 20th. Our Wednesday night men's group is also up and running on Wednesday nights. We are looking at a, uh, to also open up another Bible study for discussion and other creative ways to be community and to um, support and console one another in this time. I want to give a big thanks to our VBS for Terry and our youth and family team and all of the, the people who put together the videos, all the families that participated in that, um, the creative ways that we can reach out and while it's not the same, as having the, the building filled with children and moving and laughter and, and, and fellowship and worship. In times such as these, we are grateful for what we were able to accomplish and provide for our community. So thank you for, to those who put all the hard work into that. And we give thanks that God also blessed it to bear much fruit as well. Those are my main announcements for today. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
How small our span of life, O God, our years from birth till death. A single beat within the heart, the catching of a breath. A drop within the ocean's deep, a grain upon the shore. A flash of light before we sleep to see the sun no more. And yet our speck of life is spanned by your infinity. Our tick of time on earth is caught in your eternity. While suns and stars spin endlessly through depths of cosmic space, while eons roll and ages pass, you hold us in your grace. Our gathering song is, My soul is thirsting for you. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator and Redeemer, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are justified by faith. We have fa peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's grace has been poured into our hearts, creating them anew through the Holy Spirit. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for you while you were still a sinner. And for his sake, God forgives all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. 
Lord, you give us the gift of life, and you sustain that life through every good gift. Help us to find joy and love in the ordinary things of life, so that we might glorify you through the living out of our lives in every season that comes our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, kids, I today went, today our, our lesson from the book of Ecclesiastes is about time. There's a time and a season for everything. So right now we are in the season of summer and we've had some really, really hot days. And so that has been a, a t day, time where we have wanted to stay cool. Maybe we've had our fans on more. Maybe we've found some pools or sprinklers or lakes to jump into because that is the season that we are in. It's also the season that most of us aren't going, our, all of you kiddos are not going to school right now. And so it's a season of maybe being a little bored, of not having all of your time planned and maybe complaining about where mom and dad, I don't know what to do. I don't have enough things to do. And, and most of your parents are probably like, why don't you go back in your room and look at your toys and play a little bit more. Well, today what I, I did before worship is I went and I looked out my old watches. I haven't worn a watch in I don't know how long. I used to have a watch all the time that I'd wear. And I would watch and see the time and how the time would pass. Is it time for lunch or breakfast? Is it time to go to work? Is it time to come home? And my watch would tell me what time it was. And then I would know what I was supposed to do with that time. Now lately with this, with our kind of our, our strange time that we live in, it's sometimes hard to know what time it is or even what day it is, or what we're supposed to be doing in a certain time. So one thing that our, our Ecclesiastes tells us today is about there's a time for everything. There's a time to dance, even when it embarrasses our kids completely when we do. There's a time to sing. There's a time to clean up. Usually that time to cleaning up is right after the time of playing, which makes it even harder to clean up. There is a time to make friends. There's a time to, to call the, our friends and play with our friends. And there's a time also to wait and to be in the time that we're in. And right now, we're in a different kind of time. And we might be a little impatient and we, we might want to get to the end of this time but God also reminds us that we can't worry about what's going to happen way in the future because God gave us today. And today, God has given us each other. God has given us an, a way to connect with one another and pray and to know how much God loves us. And this afternoon, God will give you opportunities to connect with people in your life and to be listened to and to listen and to run around and have fun. And those times are important. They are gifts from God that we have. So I want you to think, what time is it? And if you're, the adults in your life are saying, it's time to clean up, Know that that's the time. It's not always the time to clean up, even though it might sometimes feel like it's always the time to clean up. Sometimes it's also the time to play and to read and to learn and to snuggle and to run and to play with your bikes. All that there's times for. And to be thankful for whatever time it is. Okay? That's an important thing that we can learn, to be thankful for what we have right now. So let us pray and give thanks for what God has given us right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for giving me my family, for giving me my toys, for giving me my house, for giving me my food, for giving me chores, for giving me time to run and time to listen 
and time to read, time for all sorts of things. Help me remember what time it is and enjoy and have fun right now. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue in our lesson from Ecclesiastes, this sermon series we're doing on the book of Ecclesiastes. Today we are in our second week and we jump to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the busyness that God has, the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as, as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should, should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already is. And God seeks out what has gone by. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A time for everything. For everything under, every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. Over the last few weeks, well, the last few months, we've had several births in our community. And the time came for them to be born. And we rejoiced as a community. As... Lindsay and Adeline and Loralee and Eden and Mallory were born. We rejoiced. Your families rejoiced as they came into the world. The curious thing about being born is we know about nine months will happen until it went, when, when, and then a baby will be born, but we cannot and we predict. We try to figure out the exact hour or the exact time that a baby will be born. Will it be... August 2nd will be August 5th, will be August 3rd. We want to put the date forward, but that is all out of our hands. There's nothing certain about the hour. The hour comes when the hour comes, whether we predicted it or not. And there may be a slight chance that we could get it on the nose, including the hour, but that is a rare case rather than the rule. And the same is true about our deaths. They're out of our hands. Luther talked about how the explanation of how out of our hands this really is, our dying itself. 
how somebody can have a mortal wound and yet they live, while somebody else is lightly wounded and nevertheless they die. I think we've been seeing that even more in our time of COVID-19 in which somebody, maybe a neighbor, maybe somebody you've been creeping on in, in Facebook or social media, and you see all the different places that they've gone to, or you're hear, hearing or seeing your neighbors, or you're driving by a park, and all your our judgment juices start flowing, and we see these people, maybe ourselves, going to multiple events, and nothing's happening to them. They are not sick. And then somebody else, maybe you, maybe somebody in your family, goes to one event. Maybe it's a, a family gathering in a backyard. Maybe it is um, going to get your hair cut for the first time. Maybe it's whatever. And then maybe you get sick and maybe your whole family gets sick. The appointed time does not belong to us. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that hard? And sometimes that is wonderful, good news, like how Gia Fuda, the Maple Valley teen, was just found along Stephen's Pass after about eight days of being lost. And on the last day they were going to look for her, they found her, and she's alive. And we rejoice. That's one perspective of this, of we do not know when we will die, and so we look and we rejoice when life continues, when we expected death. But sometimes it also leads us to feel out of control and like nothing matters. And Ecclesiastes kind of dives into that, but not in a nihilistic way, not in the way of like giving you a green light to go out and flaunt what's out of your hands. Simply because we don't know the hour of our death or even what tomorrow will bring doesn't mean that we just throw caution to the wind, and just pretend that it doesn't matter and destroy all of the order that does create security and health and some semblance of order, even in these times. You see that the, in between a time to be born and a time to die, there's that little conjunction, and... In between our birth and our death, we live one day at a time. And Luther says that there's nothing more that is our own than our life and the various parts of our body in that and, in the living of the days that God has given us, is ours to use, to use in the present. And I know our present these days looks all completely different than what we're used to having it look like. But Ecclesiastes shows us not to have the nihilistic anarch anarchist way of looking at life and just who cares, it doesn't matter anyway. But looking at the order and the humility of the fact that we don't know when we're going to die. None of us do. And in that time, the order of creation calls upon us to care for our neighbor, to look at cause and effect, the fact that gravity always will work. Even SpaceX, who's returning today, is, is banking on the fact that gravity will work as they try to return to Earth. But the day of our birth and the day of our death, that dash, that dash is so precious. In the book Creativity, Inc. by Ed Catmule, it's about the story of Pixar. Pixar and how in the subtitle of the book is Overcoming the Unseen Forces that Stand in the Way of True Inspiration. And as they looked at the narrative arc, and Ed Catmule talked about a little bit how Pixar formulates stories, there's always three acts to the stories in, that we have come to love and to consume. 
Think about Toy Story 4. Um, 4. Well, I don't want to ruin that. Most of you have maybe not seen that one. But any of the Toy Story movies, you know, you have Woody is the toy of the room, and all of a sudden, Andy has a new toy. Buzz comes into their life. And so what happens when Buzz comes into their life? There's all of a sudden an identity crisis for Woody, and Woody tries to decide who he is now and whether he is still beloved by Andy or not. And along the way, in that second act, he must go through the journey to learn a lesson and then incorporate it into his life as he works it out who he is. Every single one of the Pixar movies has this arc of adventure, of struggle, and then of working it out and being together. In that second act is where the struggle happens. It's where many of us are probably right now when we took things for granted and all of a sudden all the rules changed on us sometimes multiple times in a week and we're struggling of what that means what we can learn, how we can hold on to the moment and incorporate it into our life. What we usually do in that second act before we actually get our heads out of the mud a bit is we shut down or we close off. We compare our suffering to other people's suffering. That is some of that nihilistic tendency or I'll get into a little bit more later. Or we try to fill in the information gap. We want to know everything even though we can't yet. And so we fill in the blank. We assume, we make things up sometimes in order to feel safer. Because we allow the scarcity and the fear that we are living in to reign over us. That second act is messy. It lays us bare. It shows our prejudice. It shows our, our insecurity. It shows our selfishness. It shows our vulnerability. We are laid bare in the second act of life. And the, the irony or the challenge or the reality of whatever you want to say is the fact that that second act seems to come up a lot. Right when we figure something out, something else changes and we're right back there in that messy middle. But that's also a place of growth and learning and life. As I alluded to, a lot of times in that second act, or when we just look at the, we don't know when we're gonna be born, we don't know when we're gonna die, we don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, we want to secure the future, and so we end up living in this anxiety, this denial, the desire to have dominion over our future, over every matter under heaven, over every effort that happens over our will for what will be but that doesn't guarantee success or fulfillment. We can do everything right and we can still fail. We can do nothing right and still succeed. This is the way our world is and it's so frustrating sometimes. I don't know if you're as frustrated as I am after putting in all the hard work, but the time isn't right or something doesn't come together and no matter how much I want or try or do, it will just not always work. It's out of my hands. And the harder I hold on to it doesn't mean that it's going to work anymore. We need also God's time to connect and to breathe that life into it. So often when we look at this, at the way sometimes it succeeds for one person and the other it doesn't, sometimes life is snuffed away quickly for one person and the other person gets better and returns home and it doesn't seem like there's rhyme or reason, that is when Ecclesiastes shouts out loudly along with us, vanity of vanities, this is all absurd, it's meaningless, life is fleeting and from our our viewpoint as sinners as people 
who might feel like we are just being blown around in the world without control. We can also become anxious and want to accumulate riches and power and honor and glory and fame as if we're going to live forever or if we can somehow prevent it from happening, the, the inevitable, that we don't even know what it is. Or we get bored with the things that we have in our present. We don't cherish these moments that are gifts from God right now, always so worried about what could be lost or gained in the future. We don't live now. We get bored and we yearn for other things and still other things and still other things. The boredom, boredom of summer is something I grew up with. I mean, that was just part of what summer was until we found ways to be joyful and in some silly little games that we would make up. Or I saw a, a post on social media the other day about the joy of the ice cream truck coming by and hearing that little melody and know that a little bit of sweetness was coming into your day. You drop everything to go and run after that. An adult version, maybe not quite as joy of the moment, more of that little mingling of wanting what we don't have or don't, don't and looking for the next best thing is all the UPS and FedEx trucks and the mail trucks coming along and bringing package after package after package. Partly because, well, we're home a lot and we some things are breaking down a little bit more and we do need to replace some things. Some of it is just to fill empty spaces. Or we also put together the bingo cards of the absurd like murder hornets, who would have thought about that in June and July? Or ch mysterious seeds that we're not supposed to plant coming up at the end of July. There's a game people are playing of kind of like what could happen next. And it seems like 2020 is bringing us things that are absurd, are, are add this odd, meaningless quality to our life. And so we live in scarcity and in desperation so often. We live in denial and boredom. And as we heard last week from chapter 1, verse 9, what has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. The thing is, we're not very original in our sin we tend to repeat it over and over again. Times like this maybe amplify it a little bit bigger on a larger scale, but really are seeking after something bigger and better, more security in the future instead of living in the moment of gift is part of our human condition. Now in chapter three, we hear about God and how God works in time. In chapter 3, verse 15, we hear, That which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. While our efforts are directed toward neglecting what we have in the present, of getting bored and looking for better, Luther reminds us that God abides with us. With what God created, God abides God does not cast off creation, overthrow it, or run off to some better and bigger thing. But God desires, then and still, us. God doesn't get bored with us. God does not cast us off. In fact, God, in the right and perfect time, entered into time, into the dash between life and death, God's word became incarnate and lived among us, delighting in life, delighting in friendship. Jesus had friends and disciples. Jesus delighted in teaching. Jesus delighted in caring. Jesus delighted in healing and sharing meals with and the moments each and every day. Delighting so much in our humanity in what God created through the word, through Christ speaking, being spoken. 
that at the right time, Jesus did what we could not do. Jesus changed our future. By taking the sins of the world, the unending cycle of humanity onto himself and dying. And in the resurrection, our second act becomes filled with death and resurrection as well. When we cannot do it on our own, when we fall short, when we are in that messiness of figuring out what happened and what we need to go forward, God is there to give us, give you life again, new life, resurrection life, freed to care for your neighbor, to care for yourself, to find joy in the moments right now, even in the midst of COVID, even in the midst of restrictions, even in the midst of, of since news stories that are just overwhelming, even in the midst of an upheaval of once again the need to address equality and equity and some of the race, racism tendencies of our world. Even in these times, God is present, giving you life, abiding with you, so that you can live fully and free, freely. You have been freed to live your dash, delighting in God's provision and God's abiding. Until our final act, which Jesus also wrote for us, which is eternal life, we live in this dash. We live in this moment, and we have been gifted by God with abundance, with God's presence, with God not abandoning us just because we don't have it all figured out or we chose maybe not the best thing. God is there in those moments, giving you life, securing you, holding you, comforting you, strengthening you, so that you can fully live your dash. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to try again our music. It worked in our run through in the morning. If it doesn't work with Abigail pushing the slides forward, we'll simply listen to Danielle singing like we did in our prelude and see if that works. So we'll try a few things. So if they start again, just know that's what live worship is. Oh, 
Let us confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all according to our needs. people of God in Christ Jesus and all according to our needs. Lord, in this time where so much is so clearly out of our control, help us when we try to fill in that blank when it's not ready to be filled in yet. Help us to be patient. Help us to be kind. Help us to wait and trust and hope. And when that is hard, Lord, which is like every single day, God, be with us. Understand our frustration and our anger and bring us your peace. Bring us your hope. Bring us your presence so that we can be freed of the burden of worrying about the future so much and help us to be in these moments of joy in the giftedness of the day, of recognizing that in our toil and our sacrifice and all that we do and try to do, that you are present as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to give us a glorious dash between our birth and our death, a dash filled with so much living and life. Thank you for the blessedness of each day that you have given us. And help us to give thanks in all the moments of this dash of life. And not always simply throwing away what we're a little bored with or that's uncomfortable at the time, but to enjoy those gifts of seeing their value. Yes, knowing when to pass them on, but also not just throwing out what has worth and value, even though it's hard sometimes. Thank you for abiding with us in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for those who have been born. We give thanks for Lindsay, the daughter of Summer, and Michael. We give thanks for Adeline, the daughter of Keelan and Patricia. We give thanks for Lorelei, or Lorelei, the daughter of Dylan and Jessica. We give thanks for Eden, the daughter of Sarah and Bryce. We give thanks for Mallory, the daughter of Ryan and Alyssa. And we ask you to be with Amanda and Heidi as they are expecting to welcome children into the world soon as well. 
And just as birth is in your hands, so is our deaths as we rest in you. We pray once again for the family of Margaret as they continue to mourn. Surround them with your comfort and your presence. And in between, Lord, those who are sick or hospitalized or dealing with the challenges and the chances of life, we lift before you as well. We lift up Nancy and Nancy and Jay, Fred and Tatiana, Aldena, Mary and Pat, Susan and Cal, Carol and Diane, Ken and Phyllis, Don and Sharon and Jack and Judy, Sandy and Jack and Shirley and Kathy and those we lift before you now either silently or aloud in our living rooms and our camping sites and wherever we are worshiping today or in the comments of Facebook or Zoom chat. Lord, in between birth and death, there is so much life. Be with all of us in our second acts as we struggle, as we suffer. Bring your peace and your presence. Make them known so that when the proper time comes for healing, for dancing, for laughter, for mourning, and even for death, that we know that you are there and that we can point to your presence and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, continue to be with Creator at Lutheran Church and Preschool as we faithfully continue in the ministry and the mission that you have commended into our hands. Continue to bless and guide us as we make plans for what is to come, but also give thanks for this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hand, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to pass on just the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let's continue. As we continue with our worship, we continue with our offering. Thank you for your generosity and for considering continuing to support financially created Lutheran Church in our ministry and mission and making sure we stay up on all of our, on our obligations and also our, our care of our surrounding community. It makes a difference, and your generosity goes to places you can't even imagine, of places that are needed. And for that, I give thanks for you. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to God for you. So there's several ways to give. You can mail them in to church. You can use the Give Plus app. You can directly deposit from your church, transfer money from, not your church, from your bank account into church and um, also through our website. All of those ways will get where they need to go and be used faithfully um, for how God has um, called us as a church. So let us pray together the offering prayer. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord, the Lord God Almighty, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for or imagine. Grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. As we tried with our hymn of the day, we will try soon and very soon. If it's clipping on and off, we'll start it again and see if that helps. So thank you for your patience, and soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. to God. God bless and keep you all.